Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. And in this video, I'm doing a follow-up on one of my previous videos that I did about six months ago on the PV Valve King 100 Watt Head Mark II. Now, when I recorded that video, I decided to go and ground that primary side of the isolation transformer running the XLRDI out, which you can see on the back of the amplifier here is what I'm talking about. And then here uh, with the picture, I use a small jumper wire to ground the analog signal ground side of the primary winding of that isolation transformer to chassis ground, and that stopped the buzzing coming through the speakers. Unfortunately, I didn't realize it at the time, but it caused another problem. Basically, I was trading one problem for another. I didn't get any buzzing through the speaker cabinet, but I was getting some buzzing through the XLR MSDI out. And what I was doing was I just have a basic mixer here and I would crank the gain or the volume on this all the way up. The gain is set at 12 o'clock and I actually took some sound samples here of what it sounds like and I'll go ahead and play it for you. I'm just using Audacity as a free program to basically capture the audio from the mixer, which is USB tied. And this is the sound of the noise floor that I was having. Sounds like a ground loop, right? The cool thing with Audacity is that you have the ability to go and analyze it with a plot spectrum. And this is what we're basically looking at. You're seeing a lot of noise here, not terrible, it's negative 51 dB down, so that's your noise floor. But you're seeing that the biggest peak is, let's see here, so we're right at 60 hertz, negative 54 dB, and then it spikes over here at the 180 or so at negative 50.3 dB. So that's a ground loop. And the ground loop is not external to the amplifier, I found out. It's actually inside the amplifier. Now I do apologize. I did fix the amplifier. It's repaired now, and I'm going to give you guys the step-by-step -step on what I did in order to fix it. I did reach out to my friend John Fields over at PV Electronics in Mississippi, and he's one of the top engineers over, over there. Uh, he did not work on the Valve King Mark IIs directly, but I did ask him, well, I'm having this problem. It seems like I'm, you know, I stomp out the the noise coming out of the speaker and then it pops up on the XLR and vice versa. I can get rid of most of it if I did this, like what I did in my first video, but it's not a perfect solution. Is there something that I'm missing? John said to me, yeah, let me take a look at the schematic when I have a second and I'll get back to you. And that was only about five minutes because he then sent me this part of the schematic. And what you're seeing here is the grounding plane and the bonding between analog signal ground and chassis ground. And he basically said to me, what the hell is C21 doing there? There should not be a capacitor at all. Why don't you go ahead and try to jump that, short it out, and then see if the noise goes away on both the MSDI out and the speakers. Well, I did that. You can see that in a picture here, just a simple solder jumper. And this is located on the main board. It's not located on the patch board. And powered up the amplifier, dead quiet, no buzzing at all on the speaker cabinet or on the XLR. That solved, the, that solved all the problems. And what I can show you is the new noise floor on what that looks like since shorting that out. Hey guys, future me here. Uh, so one thing I forgot to mention was that that isolation transformer was actually the wrong part. One of the resistance of the windings, the primary side specifically, was way too low. It's supposed to be 600 ohms. It came in somewhere around 37 to 40 ohms, which is not the right part. It's actually a step-down transformer. I went back to the original schematic, so C201, C202, and those are coupling capacitors that are bipolar. It calls for 2.2 microfarads but john told me to put in one microfarad so it creates a high pass filter so there's less base frequencies coming through that that way it's less money it's not taking up any extra headroom and that's what was suggested to me to go and do it that way and you can see here in the pictures that i've already put in those capacitors and then you can see the full schematic of the msdi circuit on where they're located here we are back in Audacity, and I just recorded another sound sample. So the first half of it is with the gain at 12, and then the volume is all the way up in the beginning, and then I bring it back down to 12 o'clock on the volume, and you can definitely hear the difference in the noise floor. Mm -hmm. 
much quieter. And when we look at the plot graph with the gain at 12 o'clock and the volume all the way up, we're looking at a noise floor at a peak here of, let's say at the 120 hertz or so, negative 60 dB. That is a big difference. It really is. And then when I bring the volume knob on the mixer, still gain at 12 o'clock all the way down, like I would normally expect it to. And if you have a signal going through it, you're going to have a ton of volume going through. This is what you get now. Now you're looking at a peak noise of negative 75.9 dB down. That's almost nothing. That is a very quiet DI. Big shout out to John Fields. Thank you so much, buddy, for all of your help and your knowledge on getting this fixed for me. And for those that own this amplifier, it's about a half an hour fix when you have to do take out the you have to take out the amplifier head from the chassis. But once you do once you get in there, it's pretty straightforward to take out the transformer, replace it with the two capacitors, and jump that one capacitor that really shouldn't be in circuit, and that should solve the problem that I was experiencing here. Another quick note on the history of this amplifier. So this came out in 2013. It wasn't made for very long, and it seems that a lot of people connect with the Mark I version with the wings. It just seems to be a little bit more cosmetically pleasing. This looks a little boring to me, but I really do like the features on it with the USB recording out and the XLR MSDI, and I'm going to be playing with that more in future videos, so be on the lookout for that. I am a pretty horrible guitar player, but I enjoy it. Uh, you could check out the video up here in the corner. It's from Kyle Bull, another fellow YouTuber. And he did an amazing compare between the Mark I and the Mark II. Also, the Mark II on its own. The other main feature that I really like is the fact that you can not only use it for silent recording, but you can also take the crazy amount of power that this amplifier has from 100 watts all the way down to 5 watts with the flick of a switch on the back of it. And... I say that because uh, you see this 412 slant cabinet underneath it, and I originally did not pick that up. The guy that was selling it was selling this whole rig, and I only wanted the head, and he's like, well, if you want this, I'll make you a deal. And I says, well, what kind of a deal is a deal? Because I really don't need a 412. Honestly, does anyone need a 412 anymore? And he's like, well, I'm just, I just wanted to get it out of my room here. And I said, okay, well, how much do you want for it? Well, give me $80 cash and it's yours. Uh, yoink. <laughs> I bought it because for $80, just the cabinet alone, it was worth it. And it was in very good shape. If I wanted to go and change out the speakers to something better, I could. One of the last things I want to touch upon for this video is the feature set for the foot switches. The Valve King Mark II series, all of the micro heads, and then the new Classic 20 combo that was just announced here. Uh, you need to buy two foot switches latching with two buttons a piece in order to access all the foot switchable features. You basically need two of these in order to use on this particular amplifier and all those other heads that I mentioned. Why? Why did PV do that? I have no idea. I went to Switch Doctor over in California, and what they did was they make custom foot switches for various amplifiers and that's exactly what i did you have two tip ring sleeves that you can put into the amplifier and then you can use the channel boost reverb and then the effects loop you can toggle that in and out comes with the leds that are powered by the amplifier and this was about 132 dollars us and comes with a 15 foot cord this seemed to be a little bit better in terms of options but i'm surprised pv has not come out with something like this because this type of foot switch would work for a lot of their amplifiers but they don't make something like this they just force you to buy two and two now you may not use the reverb or the effects loop uh, as a foot switch but why again i just don't understand that something to think about but i'm not sponsored by those guys in any way i just happen to find it and if you're interested in a foot switch like this for all the different PV amplifier heads, then this is the ticket if you want to have access to all the foot switchable features. All right, guys, I'm going to end the video here. Thank you so much for watching and supporting the channel. Mystic says thank you as well, and I'll see you guys on the next project.